Hell yeah, man. I'm feeling good, man. I feel like um, I feel like I'm in a safe space right now, you know, performing in front of like books and arts and shit. <laughs> That's cool, man. Shout out to all the white homies here. <laughs> just want to let you know you're in a safe space, too, dog. <laughs> now, nah, for real, I just want to let y'all know y'all safe because um, I don't like to make fun of white people. A lot of my friends, they love to make fun of white people all the time, and um, it's not my thing, you know. Now, nah, for real, I don't like to make fun of white people mainly because um, I like opportunities and uh. <laughs> Now, real shit, I don't want to be on Telemundo. I'm trying to be on Don't Tell Comedy, so uh, <laughs> I'm just happy to be here. If this is your first time watching me, I just want to let y'all know uh, y'all catching me at a very good time. I've been uh, doing comedy for 10 years, and uh, I just started making money, like, last week. So, uh, <laughs> so tonight, thank you, thank you, yeah. So, like, tonight, if you hear me talking about, like, getting money and getting pussy, um, I just want to let y'all know that uh, I deserve it. Uh, <laughs> I worked hard for it. I grew up with immigrant parents. Uh, my, my mom is from Bolivia and my dad's from Iran. And uh, when people find out, like, yo, son, you Iranian and Bolivian at the same time? Like, how does that even happen? I'm like, yo, my parents fucked. That's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> it's a unique experience having immigrant parents. Like, you know, dog, it's different, you know? <laughs> it, 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 like, a lot of people don't know what it's like, like, you know, growing up and getting your ass beat by your parents for getting bad grades on your homework when uh, they're the ones who helped you with your homework. <laughs> Mommy, I'm sorry, we tried our best together. <laughs> Stop helping me, you can't speak any English. <laughs> I got lucky, man, I got very supportive immigrant parents. You know, they support me, um, you know. Most immigrant parents, they don't want their kids telling jokes, but uh, they support me mainly because uh, before I got into comedy, uh, I was a drug dealer. So, <laughs> yeah, so when I told them I'm gonna do stand-up comedy, they are like, finally. <laughs> He's getting his life together. <laughs> Sometimes I reflect on what I put my parents through as a young drug dealer. Like, I remember when I was 14 years old, I got, I got caught dealing for the first time. And my mom, she was devastated. Like, she didn't know what to do. So she transferred me to a rich private school, thinking it was gonna help the situation. <laughs> but in reality, she gave me a promotion. <laughs> Shout out to Bethesda, Maryland. It's where dreams come true. Yeah, man. I, uh, I grew up with a toxic Iranian father, you know? Old school toxic, man. Five foot eight, God's a bad temper, shops at Ross, he's crazy. <laughs> and uh, he, he's a wild dude, man. Uh, he drives an ice cream truck for a living, that's what he does, man. I actually grew up in a family of ice cream truck drivers. Yeah, my father drives an ice cream truck, all my uncles drive an ice cream truck. My first car was an ice cream truck. <laughs> yeah, when I turned 16, my dad was like, well, if we're gonna buy you a car, we might as well make a profit. And it's <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I grew up watching my dad fight other ice cream men in the neighborhood. I don't know if y'all knew, but it was a very violent business. Did y'all know the ice cream truck business was very violent? Yeah, the reason why it's so violent is because the only way to stop another ice cream truck from coming to your neighborhood and selling ice cream is to physically fight them. <laughs> it's true. So when I was 10 years old, I saw my dad get knocked out by another ice cream man, son. Yeah, it was very traumatic, you know, because A, you see your dad getting knocked out, but B, it's by an ice cream man. <laughs> That's supposed to be the nicest guy in the world, son. When you're a kid, you see an ice cream truck, you get excited, you're like, ice cream! That's the ice cream man! I'm like. That's the dude who knocked out my dad. <laughs> Fuck that dude. I'm gonna get revenge after this popsicle. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, man. It's kind of traumatic right now talking about the ice cream truck business because um, I used to get dropped off at school every day in an ice cream truck. Like all my friends had like regular cars, like Toyotas and Hondas. And then it'd be me like, ding, 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 ding. There goes Mario. Fuck you, dog. I had to jump out the menu like, uh. Have a good day, Dad, I love you. He's like, I love you too. Then he'd park right there and start working. <laughs> like, damn, Dad, what you gotta work at my school for? Like, it's good business. <laughs> yeah, man. Nah, but things got a lot better for me in my comedy career. I'm starting to make money for the first time, and, which is exciting, you know? Making money after being broke your whole life, it changes you uh, a lot, psychologically, you know? I'll give you an example, like, um, growing up in my neighborhood, I used to be afraid of people trying to rob me because they didn't have nothing. Now that I'm making six figures, I'm afraid of rich people trying to rob me because, um, I don't know the tax codes. <laughs> I never learned financial literacy from my immigrant parents, you know? I had to learn accounting this year for the first time. That was very stressful. I had to hire my first accountant. I walked into the office. I was like, yo, dog, what's 12 times 12? <laughs> He's like, 144. I'm like, you got the job. <laughs> I had to hire a lawyer uh, this year for the first time because I'm on tour. I need help reading contracts. And so I found this lawyer that I really liked. He's like, all right, Marty, if you want to hire me, I just want to let you know. It's gonna cost 500 an hour or 5%. Send me the contract, I started reading, I'm like, all right. 
or 500 an hour, or 5%, 500 an hour, or 5%. Got to be honest, I didn't know what that 5% meant. 5% of what? 5% of net income, gross sales? I was like, fuck. Do I need to hire a new lawyer to read this contract? <laughs> Do I need to have lawyers watching my lawyers? It was very confusing. I didn't know. For the first time this year, I paid real taxes, man. I'm talking about real taxes, dog. Like, I paid the IRS. I wrote a check for $40,000. Yeah, that shit was stressful. I feel like this crowd's not impressed by that. <laughs> for me, it's a lot of money as a comedian. $40,000, dog. I swear to God, as I'm writing this check for $40,000, I was just thinking to myself, like, damn, son, like, maybe being a Republican isn't that bad. <laughs> I could use the tax breaks. Nah, but you know, I, you know, I grew up Democrat uh, growing up as a kid, mainly because I grew up in government housing, you know? You know, that was back then, but now I fly first class, you know? So, so I feel like, you know, I got options. <laughs> I, I, wanna, I wanna be a proud Democrat right now, but it's really hard. It's a tough time. It's a tough time watching the president talk on TV, man. Yeah, every time I watch Joe Biden talk, I'm never inspired. I'm never like, oh, bars, you know? <laughs> every time I watch Joe Biden talk, I'm like, I should call my doctor. <laughs> I should check my blood pressure and make sure I'm doing okay, you know? I need to focus on me first. You ever meet like a Joe Biden like fan in public? It's weird, it always throws me off. Like I never really met like in this year, it's, it's really hard, it's rare. They're like a Pokemon, it's like you gotta catch them, you know? <laughs> I feel like Joe Biden personally to me, I feel like he's community college, you know? <laughs> that's, what we, that's what he feels like, cause like he's not where we wanna be, but we're working towards our goals, you know? <laughs> like we got a place to be in two years. <laughs> si se puede. Yeah, man. man, you know, it's, but I'm not, you know, I, I know where I'm at, you know, I, I got, you know, I just want to let you know, like, you know, I got nothing against Republicans, dog. Um, <laughs> I just want to put that out there, you know, you give off Republican, you're like, you look like you stopped drinking Bud Light like six months ago. <laughs> no disrespect, you know, respectfully. For those don't, who don't know what's going on with Bud Light, um, Republicans, they're, they're, they're protesting Bud Light because uh, they hired a trans person to promote the product. And as a result, the number one beer in America right now is Modelo, <laughs> a Mexican beer. Yes. That's right, that's right, man. I never thought transphobia was gonna cure racism, dog. <laughs> I swear to God, I never thought that was gonna happen. What caught me off guard is that like, it took like, Republicans like, to have like, a homie like, with the dick like, to like, stop drinking Bud Light. That's crazy to me. I don't know if y'all drank Bud Light, but like, it kinda tastes like a dick's already in your mouth, dog. <laughs> That shit's disgusting. <laughs> like, grow up. <laughs> and I don't want to come off right now like I'm super political, because I'm not. Like, I, I've never been a political person my entire life, but I just started paying 40000 in taxes, so... <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm just trying to get my money's worth right now, you know? <laughs> nah, I'm not political, man. I, I, you know, but, uh, I'll tell you why, because like, I recently found out what a proud boy was. I recently found out, I didn't know. I didn't know until, until January 6th happened. That shit caught me off guard because I'm from Washington, D.C. That's where I grew up. And so uh, on January 6th, I got a phone call from one of my best friends. Caught me off guard. He's like, hey, yo, son, you heard about the Proud Boys? They about to pull up to D.C., our city. I was like, yo, is that like a new musical or something? <laughs> He's like, nah, bro, they're white nationalists. They all right, do your Googles. I was like, all right, yeah. So I did my Googles. <laughs> Turns out they are fucked up. They are white national, they are alt-right. Then I did further research. I found out that the leader of the Proud Boys is an Afro-Cuban Latino. Yeah, real shit. His name is Enrique Terrio. That shit fucked me up. As a Latino, that shit fucked me up, son. I'm like, damn, son, like Latinos, we really out here taking white people's jobs, son. <laughs> like, son, we gotta do everything. We gotta show you how to be racist, too? <laughs> Give me the handcuffs, I arrest myself. <laughs> Hey man, appreciate y'all, man. My name is Martin Meaning. Thank you guys so much. Have a good night. Thank you.